Hey everybody, welcome to Ecuador. It's been a crazy few weeks and I'm going to fill, fill you in uh, all about it. But first, I just want to thank you guys so much. We just passed 4,000 subscribers. And from a YouTube perspective, this is not a high number at all. But from uh, our niche in Ecuador, uh, talking about our travels here, uh, and everything that we're doing and living our life in Ecuador. That's a pretty big thing. At least it is for us. And so thank you so much for uh, for all of your comments you've been putting on the channel. We're getting to know quite a few of you who are regular uh, commentators for our videos and talking about when you're coming here or when you're visiting. And we've had... Uh, uh, we've we've met many of you. We have lunches with many of you um, when you stop by in your exploratory trips in the alone area on the coast here, and we've also got many emails um, as well as comments on the videos. Uh, but many emails from uh, many of you as well. The only thing I'd like to apologize for um, is, unfortunately, uh, now that we've reached, the, the, the bad part of this um, is that now we get a lot more mail and uh, we do try and answer all of the mail um, that we do get. And I think, and I think we have. Uh, the problem is, though, unfortunately, is we can't go back and forth um, on a lot of conversations and I know a lot of you put a lot of time in sending us long notes and uh, we just don't or I just I'm the one who answers them and I just don't have the time to be able to you know do justice and give you long replies um, and we're not facilitators we're not lawyers we're not experts um, and a lot of your questions really are not are not for us um, you really should be directing them more towards someone and people who are more knowledgeable about those uh, those types of things. Um, but we're glad to hear about your experiences and, and we do reply as much as we can, if not all the time. We just can't have those those long conversations back and forth and 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 I do hope you under you understand that. But if you're in the area, give us a shout. We try and uh, try and meet everybody. Um, that we can and unless we're already booked or out of the area then uh, then we certainly will now um, you know we talk about the 4,000 subscribers but um, what I think is even more important than the subscribers is the number of views that we get and that's actually what uh, what we get paid on so we get between 16,000 and and 20,000 views per month on our channel, which is so shocking for us. We had no idea we'd be getting that number of, of views. And uh, we have a lot of variable content, as you know, on the channel. Everything from, you know, a little trip we might take uh, to a little town on the coast to some of the nature videos that we have to the whole Ecuador news uh, uh, type of things that we do. Um, to some of the people that we might interview about, you know, building a house on Ecuador. So we're kind of cover all kinds of different things that we're kind of interested in and we'll continue, uh, continue to do that. Um, but we thought you'd be interested in sort of knowing, you know, how many views do we do get? Um, but just thank you so much. Um, uh, we really always enjoy, um, you know, hearing from you. And uh, those comments uh, that you make are certainly uh, certainly very special uh, to us. And and Chris will be joining us um, uh, soon. I really wasn't going to talk about this part without her, but I did anyway. Because the next thing I wanted to talk about was I've been back to Canada. Uh, 
Um, so uh, hasn't been under the best of circumstances. It was one of those trips that was unplanned uh, last minute. Um, my older brother, who's uh, 77 years old, uh, had a heart attack and was scheduled for open heart surgery. So I flew back uh, to Ontario, uh, to Toronto, and then um, uh, also flew from Toronto, or actually tried to fly from Toronto to North Bay, which is about a, a three hour drive, a one hour flight. Um, got on the plane, the plane uh, uh, decided to, the landing gear wasn't safe and went back to Toronto. Then I got on some shuttle bus and eventually made it to uh, the North Bay area. He was in a, in a hospital in Sudbury. So I want to make a few comments about sort of the trip back to back to Canada. First of all, he's doing fine now. I'm back in Ecuador. I was there for just under a couple of weeks. Um, visited him every day, helped the family out. And um, he had ended up having triple bypass and is recovering well at his uh, at his uh, at his residence now out of the hospital and everything's uh, going well. So fantastic. Uh, as far as that goes. But uh, interesting perspective on Canada. We've not been back. Um, so we've been in Ecuador a, um, a year and a half now. And one thing I would totally recommend, Chris and I did it and it was so helpful this time. So but if, before an emergency happens, you know, talk to your spouse or if you're single, you know, think to yourself, Okay, if something bad happens, what am I going to do? Um, sort of plan things out ahead of time. Either you're going to go back or you're not going to go back. Or for what individuals, what family members, what friends. You know, think about all those things ahead of time. So when those circumstances come up, you're not thinking, oh, what should I do? Now, some of that's going to happen anyway because, you know, the emotions are going to get involved. But, uh, you know, try and think of, of, uh, of that ahead of time. Uh, and it'll really help things out uh, so that you're not wasting a lot of time. Um, so going back. So let's, let's talk a little bit about uh, my experience going back to Canada. I haven't been there for a year and a half. Uh, the immediate, immediate thing was, was food prices. Uh, it's gone crazy. And, I, and that really shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. Um, they were already starting to go up significantly um, when we were there. But by not being in the country, you don't notice the gradual increases. You go back there. And I was the one who did a good part of the grocery shopping or most of the grocery shopping. I really enjoyed it. And uh, I would go to two or three grocery stores about once a week. Um, we lived in a rural area on a lake. So, um, you know, we would we would drive into North Bay which is a, a town of about 60,000 people. And then uh, I would hit the hit, hit like a Walmart and uh, two or three other stores and um, get my supplies. So I got to know the prices quite well. And so when I went back this time, we also picked up a few things. I brought an extra suitcase back to Ecuador. Not anything that was super special, but since I was there anyway, it was like, oh, why not pick up a few things that might be a little harder to get. Not impossible to get, but a little harder to get here in Ecuador. Um, so did that. So the prices were, I knew they were going to be high. People warned me, but it was, it was crazy. So when we first moved here, uh, we moved here for other reasons. They really weren't about price and trying to save money. Um, you know, and you can watch our video on, on, on why we moved here. I won't go into all that now. But, uh, you know, cost of living was maybe down number four, number five, somewhere in around there. Um, but if we were moving now, um, the cost of living would probably be number three or number two. Like it would be a major consideration um, because you could just, you know, change your life so significantly. Because things in Ecuador, although they've gone up in price, they, they're nothing like they 
they've gone up in Canada. And that's housing costs as well. Renting and buying have gone nuts. It's over $2,000 uh, a month, the average price to rent a simple, small one bedroom apartment. Um, and uh, of course, people make a lot more money in Canada than they do in Ecuador, but the prices, uh, their, their income has not gone up as much as uh, the prices have. So, you know, people in Canada who are, uh, you know, middle, middle class or used to be middle class or are now, you know, lower middle class and upper middle class are now lower middle class. So it's, it's, uh, uh, you yeah, know, want don't want to get into all the politics, but there's real reasons why that happened. It's just not bad luck or, or, uh, or some accident. Um, the uh, other thing I wanted to comment was, because I got to really see the healthcare system in Canada up close. Um, so he was in a hospital in um, Sudbury, and um, so I saw the good and I saw the bad. So let me talk about the good, which is the most important, is the care that he got was fantastic. The people um, in the uh, cardiac unit at that Sudbury hospital, amazing. And after he had his operation, I just want to give a call out to one person in particular in the ICU in Sudbury. And I think her name is Tina, if I got that right. She was just amazing. It's uh, anyone who's sort of like in a technology or medical field. Um, it's pretty unique to have an individual who knows all of the science stuff or all the technology stuff, but at the same time has all of those soft skills, all of those, those understanding and sympathetic and knows how to talk to people and knows how to explain things in, in, a, in a very compassionate way. And, uh, you know, she was amazing. But Tons of people were amazing. The doctors were amazing. Um, and they're basically working, and this is the negative part, in a system that, that is fundamentally broken through no fault of their own. Um, it's a system where they've been putting Band-Aids on for years. And uh, unfortunately, it needs to be, you know, fixed. And, and uh, the issues are many and complex, and, and I can't go, th you know, through them here. But... You know, here's someone, my brother, who, and there was many people there who who needed, you know, um, heart surgery, heart uh, uh, open open heart surgery, and and they had to wait. And the only reason they had to wait was that um, uh, there's a waiting line for everything in Canada, whether it's a knee replacement of months or uh, heart surgery where it's days and weeks. Um, and unfortunately, you know, sometimes it happens that, that people don't make the wait period. And there's waiting periods for MRIs. There's waiting, waiting uh, periods for, for all kinds of different tests. Um, waiting periods to, to see a specialist to then have the MRI. And that you then wait and wait and wait and wait. And for certain cancers, obviously, that's not, uh, not a great thing. Um, but in this particular case, everything worked out great. The people were amazing, and uh, it was, uh, you know, something we couldn't really hope for uh, for any better. So, you know, thank God for that. So, one thing the trip to Canada was not um, it was not a vacation trip. So, I really didn't spend any time, you know, visiting anybody or or didn't spend extra time there. It was really focused on, um, you know, spending time uh, uh, with, uh, with my brother while he was in the hospital waiting for um, the, uh, the open heart surgery. And then I spent uh, a couple days after um, his surgery just to make sure everything was okay before I, uh, I came back to Ecuador. I did have one day um, where I went and visited my uh, one of my daughters um, who uh, actually bought um, Chris and uh, and my old house that we lived in before. So that was about uh, an hour's drive um, from where I was staying in North Bay. So I was staying at my other brother's house in North Bay. So 
took that drive down. And this is where I thought, you know, I'm a pretty sentimental guy. And I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to go see the old house. And, of course, they would have changed it all around and the property and, you know, see the lake since we left it. So if I thought I would have any regrets or wondering if I did the right thing or, you know, anything like like that, this is this is the moment it would have it would have come up. Um, now you need to know when we were back or when I was back in Ecuador, Chris and I had the opportunity. We were, we were thinking of going back. The plan was to go back to Canada and, and we never, you know, once a year and we, and we didn't do that. And, uh, you know, we just didn't really have the desire to go back. And a lot of our friends and family were coming here. So we were seeing people and of course, you know, videos and social media, you can really keep um, you know, in touch with people without having to fly back to be able to, uh, to, uh, you know, visit with people. So as I was driving there and, you know, I was thinking, no, oh, what is this trip going to be like? And, uh, it was actually fantastic. Um, you know, I went, saw them, saw the house, saw everything that they've done to it. Um, it was great. They've made all kinds of amazing changes, um, saw the lake, um, visited with the neighbors, uh, walked around a bit by myself. Um, it was actually really good to see, and it was actually a very healthy exercise. Um, I didn't miss anything, um, and it made me feel actually very happy to see them enjoying something that I used to really, really love. Um, so that was, that was really a wonderful day there, um, you know, spent, uh, spent with them. And, uh, it made me realize that we did come to Ecuador for all the right reasons. And, uh, it was a, it was a healthy decision. Um, and it was a good sort of check to kind of see, uh, you know, how, how that was. But there was no tears, there was no crying, and I'm, I'm a guy that, that cries sorry but uh, maybe not bawling but I will have tears from time to time so if it was gonna happen it was gonna happen then anyway now we're gonna go on to the next part where we're gonna give you an update on uh, Byron and uh, Junie and the family and how they're doing um, and I'm sorry we should have done this earlier but we couldn't have because I went back to Canada, as you just heard. And so we couldn't do that update. Um, but now we're going to give you that full update. Chris is going to join us. And we're going to be talking to uh, uh, Junie and Byron and seeing how they're doing with the potential surgery. If you don't know anything I'm talking about, go see the uh, uh, previous video where we asked for your help in uh getting some money to help out this amazing Ecuadorian family. Hello again, everybody. Um, today we are at Byron and Judy's house. It's been about a month that we were here videotaping um, our friends. And we thought we'd give you a little bit of an update about uh, what has happened in the last month. And um, let you know about how much money that we've made for this family. Um, so with our GoFundMe, uh, all together in Canadian dollars, we made um, $4,401. So that converts in U.S. to uh, $3,225. So we have made, uh, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight payments to Byron and Judy's uh, bank account. Um, and that was for thirty-two twenty-five, but plus because of that, um, Byron's um, actual his boss gathered up um, some money for his co-workers, and like his co-workers, they don't make a whole bunch of money either. So it was really good. They actually pulled together three hundred and eighty dollars and put that towards um, Byron and Junie. 
And um, Eileen, the person that uh, they're working with, she pulled $500. So all together, the whole kit and caboodle pulled in $4,105. Mm -hmm. So that was really, really good. It was such a nice thing to see this family get that bunch of money. So it really helps. So where did some of that money go? They still have a lot of that money in the bank account because the surgery hasn't happened yet. Um, they did spend some of it on um, going to Guayaquil twice. They went to the doctor and Mike will explain explain some of that mm -hmm. um, they did buy school supplies for the kids of course they had to buy food uh, for the family and um, necessities and stuff like that but now I'll let Mike take it away and uh, tell you about the doctor's appointments that Byron had to go to hey everybody <laughs> hey everybody um, first, before we sort of talk about the hospital thing, I just want to thank you so much for all the donations that you gave. I know it was overwhelming for Chris and I, and it was overwhelming for Junie and Byron. And, uh, and, and Junie's English is actually improving a lot because she understands a lot of what I'm saying. See, see, she understands. So I can't talk about her as much as I used to be able to because she understands what I'm saying now <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, uh, so what they did was since since the last time um, when we gave the update on with Byron's knee here it's his right knee this area um, with uh, ligament damage of some type um, he we took the advice of some of the people who who um, made comments on the last video basically saying to go Guayaquil and they'll do it for free and it's no big deal. Well, they made two trips to Guayaquil um, to hospitals, going to the emergency and, you know, trying to get some help. And uh, um, they did have some x-rays done, but essentially they, they would not go ahead and do anything um, at that point, um, which is too bad. And of course, x-rays, for those of you who know anything about ligament damage, x-rays don't really show ligament damage. Um, and so what has happened is originally when they, when they had the, uh, when Byron had the accident, he went to a doctor in a loan and, the lo and that doctor referred um, him to a, a trauma doctor in the Santa Elena hospital. This is all through the government hospitals. And that Santa Elena doctor, that appointment is for August 5th. So that's what we're waiting for now, that August 5th appointment. And the likelihood, uh, the likely outcome there will be that doctor will order an MRI um, which will speed up. That'll probably be paid for from the from the uh, donations, so we can get that result and not have to wait for the MRI. And um, we'll sort of move ahead and keep you up to date with what's uh, with what's going on there. So you know we don't have enough money to be able to go straight to the private system and have this done and taken away. So each week passes. We, uh, well not we use, they use um, the funds that you've donated to basically survive with food and school supplies for the kids and, uh, you know, try to make, uh, Junie's been working um, as much as she can and be able to get work and her English is getting better so that I'll be able to bring her along every once in a while when I need, uh, need some translation because my Spanish is not getting as good as her <laughs> English is through no fault of her it's it's my memory that keeps forgetting things and I pronounce words incorrectly which gets me into all kinds of trouble yes as Junie pointed out when I say things that are not so nice to people sometimes <laughs> <laughs> right, Chris. Right. Yes. <laughs> now, if I was 78, I'd get away with it. But I still look fairly young, so I don't get away with saying those bad things. <laughs> so. so one of the things when you start a GoFundMe, you have no idea what's going to happen. 
and uh, the same in this particular case, obviously. And one of the most rewarding things for Chris and I was when the donations that you guys gave started rolling in and I was able to talk to Junie and Byron and show them that the donations were coming in and I wish I would have filmed it and I regret it uh, so much now because seeing the expressions on their faces and they were so happy and and uh, it was just amazing so I know they want to say thank you for for you know giving what you gave and uh, it really helps them a lot I know Hola, sí, la verdad estamos muy agradecidos con la comunidad que tienen en YouTube, Chris y Michael. Eh, gracias por sus recomendaciones que nos hicieron a través de los comentarios. La verdad asistimos a esos hospitales, pero no tuvimos buenos resultados. Así que viajamos en dos ocasiones, pero no tuvimos buenos resultados. Así que nos regresamos a casa a esperar a la fecha en agosto para que lo vea el traumatólogo de Santa Elena. La verdad, muchas gracias por todo lo que nos han ayudado. No pensamos recibir esas donaciones de un momento a otro, pero Dios es grande y que nos han ayudado ustedes también. Bye. De mi parte, muchas gracias eh, a toda esa gente que ha, ha dado ese granito de arena hacia mi familia. Eh, me ha ayudado mucho eh, en este momento porque eh, yo no estoy trabajando, eh, mi esposa trabaja un día, dos días a la semana y prácticamente ese dinero con el que nos han donado no, no han ayudado mucho eh, para la escuela, el colegio de mis hijos, eh, para la comida, pasajes, eh, muchas gracias de verdad, de todo corazón le agradezco a ustedes, a Mai, a Chris, que son como mi familia, eh, a ellos los quiero mucho, eh, eh, gracias a ellos también he conseguido todo esto, estas donaciones, porque, o sea, si no hubieses tenido a esta familia, a estos amigos increíbles, no hubiese conseguido nada, y así que le doy muchas gracias a ellos y a todos los que me han donado el dinero, muchísimas gracias.